you about what's going on in your community, um, any pressing issues, anything that's uh, happened. And where do you come in in terms of advocacy? And we have some um, advocacy notes for you as well. All right. So why don't we go ahead and um, Eric will do some federal updates. Great. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, again, it's great to see everybody here. Thanks for your patience. Um, not a lot to report on the federal level, except uh, something that is big that needed to be reported. For those of you who may not have caught it, uh, there is a fiscal year 23 federal budget that is currently in place. Uh, it's a long time coming. Uh, for those of you who have been uh, attending meetings, you've heard some updates. Uh, there have been several continuing resolutions, which would basically um, kick the can down the road for Congress uh, numerous times. Uh, and this is uh, actually a pretty exciting uh, development to have this take place. As we know, there's some changes taking place with respect to Congress with the election in November. And then, of course, for those of you who are policy uh, walks and you spent uh, a lot of time on CNN or other cable news networks, you got to see the, um, the, I'm trying to think of a polite word of saying it, the train wreck that took place in Congress with respect to the election of the speaker. Um, what you, I, I think, saw there was some um, um, unfortunate dysfunction, um, and it does, uh, I think, reassure me to know a budget is in place now, because I think if it had not been done um, prior to um, January, uh, it's something that would have lingered and have been extremely painful with a lot of continuing resolutions uh, along the way, which we know is a net negative um, if there aren't increases along the way and just holding the consistent uh, budget in place. So uh, we just want to indicate um, that uh, it's an omnibus spending bill. We've talked about uh, Congress pursuing that as opposed to individual budgets from each department, um, putting it all together into one giant budget uh, and acting on it that way. So the final spending bill uh, provides HUD programs about $62 billion, which is about $8 billion, a little more than $8 billion more than the enacted levels from fiscal year uh, 22. And so we know that that's actually about $745 million more than the amount that the Senate had originally proposed, but it's nearly a billion dollars less than the amount that the House had in its proposed budget um, throughout the, uh, the budget process. So they came together in the middle. Um, not exactly what we wanted, uh, but better than what it could have been. So a, a pretty significant influx really uh, of uh, funding into uh, HUD's budget. Uh, I am going to be tossing in a link into the chat so that you can see the updated fiscal year 23 budget chart uh, for select federal housing programs. It's something that we have circulated in the past. Uh, and I think this will be helpful for you to see where some of those most significant increases are, um, including um, community uh, development fund uh, increase, um, voucher increases, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to go through all of those things. You can take a look at that at your leisure. And let's see if there's anything else to mention. Um, that's probably about all I want to say at the federal level. Uh, again, I'll drop that uh, budget chart into the uh, chat. Does anybody have any question uh, about the budget or the process going forward? Everybody have enough info? Okay, um, just indicating here on this slide, Homelessness and Housing First webinar series is beginning January 9th at 2.30. Um, that's a webinar series I think that would be useful to you if you're able to sign up for it. Um, I think we're going to have to drop that link into the chat box. Amy, I don't know if that was the intent or not. Is that a yes or a no? Didn't see a nod or 
Sorry, Thank no. You. Um, at yeah. the top of the chat is the PDF slides, and all there the links go. are in those slides, so you should be cool. all set. Thank you might you. need to Thank share it again, just because people that joined after might, for some reason, they'll share. also be emailed out to you in a post follow up email. But you're welcome to drop whatever you want in the chat as well, just to cover our bases. But you will get everything after the meeting. Yeah, thanks, Amy. We've been trying to send things out immediately after the meetings, but we do have a little bit of a different format here. Thank you, Amy, uh, to try to get some information to you on the front end during the session itself. So uh, that's all I have on the federal level, unless there were any uh, questions or any comments that anybody wanted to share. I just wanted to make a comment, if I can, about the new Congress. So Congress, um, each Congress is um, its own, but it's uh, a Congress lasts for two years. And then each year is its own session. So if a bill didn't get passed previously, it has to be reintroduced or re, you know, reworked and reintroduced the next year. All right. Thank you. Lisa, because you actually gave me time to think of something else I just wanted to mention very quickly, that if this Congress is going to have to be thinking in terms of the budget ceiling, um, and, and it's not going to be over the next two years to figure that out, they're going to have to do that sooner as they will need to start the appropriations process. So just be aware we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but it uh, may not be um, a slam dunk going forward, uh, as I mentioned, that dysfunction on the House side may set up uh, a little bit of a battle uh, with some people who are um, to the right a bit who really push hard when it comes to the debt ceiling. Um, so um, the, uh, the budget ceiling, excuse me. So we'll wait and see what happens there, but I wanted to point that one out. That's a wild card right now. And that's all I have. And then I'll just speak to the slide for a moment in the event Eric hasn't had a chance to review it. Um, in each section that we have today, there's a slide that will follow up of what can you do about this information um, in terms of participating in the advocacy process more. Um, so this page kind of summarizes a little bit about what Eric talked about and as an example, an upcoming webinar, it happens to be today, but if you wanna learn more about Housing First, um, they've updated some of their uh, web pages. Um, so this is things you can go ahead and do and take a look at um, that we've tried to summarize in one slide as well. And I know that webinar is just today, but we wanted to include it in the event you guys had any availability. Yeah, thanks. I, oh, I just wanted to mention that this is an ongoing series that National Low Income Housing Coalition, the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities and the National Alliance to End Homelessness are collaborating on and, and um, you can see the recorded ones from, I believe it started uh, mid-summer maybe last year and it's continuing into this year. And, and today's uh, session is about uh, what kind of things were like before Housing First came into being and was you know a, a vetted and researched philosophy and practice and, um, the sessions that I've attended have been very good. They also have a dedicated web page that talks about um, housing first threats and some things going around nationally and around the country. So you may want to take a peek, and that is uh, linked there in the slide. I just want to give a little um, context here for those who don't recall. In previous meetings, we've talked about the attack on housing first that's been taking place across the country. This is just uh, a follow up to that and just want to make sure that you have opportunities um, to learn about Housing First or reacquaint yourself with Housing First uh, as it relates to um, the uh, homeless service system, the delivery system. Uh, some of us were around uh, when Housing First um, was first adopted. Some of us are new uh, to it. So I just want to make sure that you realize there is an opportunity for you to kind of get up to speed. Um, these are smaller chunks of time that are being carved out. Uh, but even if you had some familiarity, reacquainting yourself with it so that you are able to talk the talk in case you encounter individuals or organizations that may be pushing against housing first, we want to make sure that you have the tools to at least be able to talk intelligently about it and feel comfortable in knowing what the background is and, and uh, what impact it's had on 
homeless service uh, delivery system. So there you go. Next slide. Thanks, Eric. So the next one is uh, a little bit about some of the state updates. And we wanted to also say that, of course, there's a new legislature um, this year. This is the start of a new two-year cycle for Michigan for the legislature. So any bills that were introduced in 2021 or 2022 that were not passed have to be reintroduced again this cycle. Um, so I know that some of them are being worked on. Uh, we are, and we'll talk about how you can um, participate, but source of income protections that were introduced both in 2019 and 2021 did not pass. We are um, taking a sharp pencil to the language and revising it a little bit and um, working with legislators on in reintroducing that, as well as other things that um, were priorities like the eviction expungement bill that Senator Winnie Brinks had introduced, as well as some tenant protections, um, just cause legislation, rental caps. So uh, we'll be making you aware of all of those as they um, are introduced, or if they're you know, any actions that you need to do to advocate for those. I also wanted to let you know that um, MICA is part of the campaign to end homelessness at the state level and the Michigan Housing Policy Council sent a letter to the governor's executive office uh, last month with recommendations for both budget, budget and policy priorities. Um, that link is to that letter. It is a public document now, so you can see that. You can also look for that in terms of how you can advocate for very similar uh, priorities and, and budget, um, hopefully appropriations. Some of them were shelter um, expansion, shelter improvements. MDHHS had put out um, some funding and got inundated with a lot of requests. And so, um, you know, there's a recognition that there's a lot of need for shelter improvements out there. So that was one of the recommendations. Also some recommendations for um, youth uh, housing, housing of all kinds, supportive housing services and supportive housing again. Um, also the tenant protections that um, we're working on. So a lot of different, um, beneficial policies and budget asks. So take a look at it. Also wanted to let you know that the Campaign to End Homelessness Action Plan, State Action Plan, it's a three-year plan that was just released also. And um, that's a link to the plan. Uh, I think in another slide, we have a link with, there's coming up a webinar that um, both the campaign on homelessness, along with partnering with the United States Interagency Council on both of those action plans. Um, the webinar is January 18th at 10 a.m. And so and I highly recommend you seeing that. Lisa, that link will take you right to the registration for that. Great. All right. Thanks. Next one. Um, I just neglected to mention the action plan, sorry, the action, you can stay on this slide, the action plan to end homelessness at the state level, it, it really includes um, some great information. It's a great document. It, it, um, CSH took the lead along with um, the partners on the campaign in putting that together. So it, it talks about some of the goals that the state has, the campaign has, including um, a 10% reduction in um, homelessness in four years. It also uh, identifies, uh, there's a chart with the champion entity that's charged with, you know, kind of taking the lead on that particular goal or that particular strategy. It also includes information on the campaign structure. So you might want to check it out. It's definitely um, a great um, thing to look at, but also to align, you know, your COC efforts, your organizational efforts with some of the strategies and goals that are being worked on 
statewide. And it also talks about um, some of the other efforts that are going on across the state and how um, the campaign and homelessness and the action plan are aligned with those efforts as well. And then you'll see a lot of synergy with the federal plan. So we're all trying to march in the same direction and, and move forward. So it's a good document. All right. You are first to hear hot off the press that Micah is sponsoring our Homelessness Advocacy Day for 2023. And uh, we've selected a date. It will be Wednesday, March 15th. We've secured a location, which is a great spot. It's a Michigan Municipal League. Yes, it's in person this year. It is not virtual. It's in person, um, which is just steps away from the Capitol. So it's a really nice space. So we'll be there between nine and three. Um, we will be starting off with breakfast and uh, I guess speaker and some comments. We will plan to do a webinar a week or two in advance to talk about, um, for those of you that'll be joining us, some different advocacy points and talking points and um, things that we'll be advocating for with all the legislators. Um, the House and the Senate meet on different schedules. So the Senate meets in the morning. And so those of you that wanna advocate and, and have appointments with your senators, your state senators, We'll be doing that in the morning. And then, um, I think I got that backwards. The, the Senate meets in the morning, so you'll meet with them in the afternoon. The House meets in the afternoon, so we'll be setting up meetings in the morning. It's a little complicated, but believe me, we'll get it straight. So when you register, and registration will be going out within a, in a week, we're, we're just getting that set up now, you will be asked your zip code. It's really important for you to put which zip code you know, whether it's your work or your residence, because that's how we will schedule you for your appointments with your reps and your senators. So um, more to come on that, but I just wanted to make sure you knew about that. And please sign up. We're looking for a super robust participation from all of you. It'll be nice getting, getting back to doing in-person advocacy. So here's some updates from us. Um, a lot of different things that we're working on, as I mentioned, you know, we're, we're starting full steam ahead in this new year. Um, we will be doing training on Advocacy Day. I'm working with Amy, who is our communications manager on Advocacy Page Overhaul on our website, um, as well as some other uh, changes to the website. Um, tentatively, we hope to work on legislative training with, there's, I think about 54 of the House members are new this year. So there's a, a, a new, uh, quite a new class of legislators. So it's great to kind of get out ahead and let them know about what we do, what our work is, kind of the history of homeless response and what we're seeing both on the homelessness side, which is um, an overall reduction, but increases in some target populations, as well as what's been going on in the housing arena. So. Um, We'll be um, working on that. We're also doing a video clip on advocacy, and it's um, going to be a very tight couple minutes, but we're working on that in February to coincide with our advocacy day planning. And so here's an opportunity for you if you are interested in being featured in that, whether you're an advocate or you're um, a person with lived experience. We're looking maybe for some legislators to talk about the importance of ad advocacy. Please email me. We'd love to include you if you um, would be so gracious as to participate with us. And it'll be, you know, really tight, maybe 20 or 30 seconds. But just, you know, why, why do you advocate? Why is it important to you? We're also um, in the late stages of defining our 2023 advocacy policy priorities. And we reached out to all of you and some of you participated with us in December, both in person and on Zoom. We have a nice slate of important policy priorities that we're going to be um, moving forward with this year. And it'll come up in, in a slide uh, just in a minute. Um, we also have an advocacy committee with our board of directors that's meeting later this month to talk about um, some of the work that we're doing and how they can help us move it forward. 
One of the other things that we've worked on, we had a, we had a grant with our um, partner, National Low Income Housing Coalition, and we have a new one for um, the ERASE, which is um, ending rental arrears to stop evictions. And it coincided with the ERA funding or SARA funding, as we called it in Michigan. And we're moving forward with that, um, even though a lot of the states have um, expanded, expended, excuse me, all of their funding. Um, some are standing up new programs. There's um, a different program that MISTA is going to be standing up. Some of the communities have used some of their ARP funding to um, promote um, some ERA funding to uh, folks that are uh, behind on their rent. And also uh, as a part of this, we're working on a lot of tenant protections. We're looking at um, right to counsel is one thing that the campaign suggested to the governor, statewide right to counsel, um, just cause legislation so that landlords can't just say, I'm not renewing your lease, source of income protections, and many more things. So we're working as part of a cohort with other uh, state partners and with our partner at the national level, the National Low Income Housing Coalition. So you'll be seeing a lot more from the uh, from us on um, erase work as well. We're also doing lots of media spots, interviews. Uh, I just did a podcast for Lansing Community College that aired over the weekend. So thank you, Amy, for linking that. We um, were interviewed as part of a free press article recently that hasn't come out yet that's being worked on regarding um, you know, evictions and housing and um, what is being done um, to support tenants. So you can go to the next slide, please. And I'm, if I'm missing any questions, let me just check and see, no, okay. All right, thanks. So um, some of our policy priorities, these are tentative pending um, final approval by our board, but um, both the member survey that we did and the discussion that we led really kind of coincided. A lot of people voted on these priorities, which in include increasing affordable housing. We all know that um, we're really behind. And so it needs to really be an emphasis, both funding and policy wise to enable housing to be um, developed or preserved. Um, you talked about preserving and expanding income support. So people had um, earned income and a way of paying their rent. Um, support for housing first protections and housing first as a philosophy and as a kind of just a policy for um, moving people rapidly from homelessness into housing. Oh, I saw a typo. So we're enacting tenant protections. That's my fault. Uh, all across the board, uh, you know, rights for both renters and for people who are hoping to be homeowners. So for example, source of income protections protects people both, uh, it protects the source of income, hopefully as a protected class. We're looking at um, the legislation being introduced that would amend the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act. So it would include source of income as a protected class. So people couldn't, um, you know, landlords couldn't say, I don't take your SSI, I'm not including that as part of your income or your veteran benefits or your housing choice voucher, all legal sources of income, including retirement benefits and entitlements would be included. Um, also reducing racial disparities, as we know, um, you know, housing discrimination has been, you know, rampant, uh, especially during the pandemic, especially impacting people of color, um, folks who might be immigrants, people with disabilities. We see um, seniors facing housing discrimination. So um, reducing racial disparities is really a priority. Um, that goes hand in hand with um, discriminatory, discriminatory actions. And finally, um, funding for shelter. I talked about um, the need for shelter improvements, but also expansion for just uh, sheltering options for folks, non-congregate shelter options, um, 
a range of shelter options for all different uh, target populations. Next slide, please. So here's some ways you can participate with us and advocate and make your voice heard. Um, you can participate with us during these monthly meetings and, and we'll have a spot coming up for you to weigh in on things that are happening in your community, things that you're concerned about or questions that you might have, or ways that we can help support um, the efforts that you're making in your communities. We are going to be hosting our Breakfast of Champions again, and we have an advocacy award that we would love for you to nominate somebody this year. So we had uh, some great nominations last year. We really like to shine a light on those of you that are really taking some action, whether you're a person in the community, a person with a lived experience, or a legislator. Um, we'd love to get some really robust nominations from those of you around the state. You can also sign up for Advocacy Day and work with us on um, that particular March 15th day of advocating. Um, and as I mentioned, later registrations will be uh, available later this week. One other thing, if you're interested, and I know some of you on the call here participate with us on our Coalition for Expanding Housing Access. That's a kind of a collaborative group of advocates around the state that are working on the source of income protections. So if you wanted to email me, I can add you to the registration uh, list for those meetings. The meetings will be starting again. We met monthly during the fall, and now we are going back to our every other week rotation. So it's going to be this Thursday, January 12th, and then again, January 26th. So every other Thursday at 10 a.m. So please feel free to join us. We would love to have you participate. There's lots of great work and we have uh, three different work groups. We have a research work group. We have a public awareness work group and a legislative work group. And we all work hand in hand to really work um, in a concentrated way on hopefully moving forward with this legislation. And then you can also participate in our advocacy video that I mentioned. So I'd really love to have a couple advocates really join me in talking about why it's important to advocate and how you can make a change. All right, next slide. So this is the time of our call. So we want to hear from you if there are things coming up in your community, there are ordinances that are being proposed or bills locally any policies that are being enacted or anything that you're hearing about that you wanted to mention, this is the time that we designate for you. You can feel free to unmute yourself or if you wanna raise your hand, that's all right too. Or if you wanna put something in chat, you're too shy to go off mute. Any way you're comfortable. Not hearing from anyone. I'll mention uh, one that I heard about um, in Grand Rapids. In, I think it was Grand Rapids um, in that Kent County. Uh, it was a ordinance that had not passed, but was being proposed around um, not allowing people to lay down or uh, kind of loiter in public rights of ways, public spaces, sidewalks, roadways. And it was really an effort um, around people um, maybe panhandling and so um, it was something that I saw come across my email and it was quite concerning. And so I reached out to a colleague who works with us on the Coalition for Expanding Housing Access, um, who was also quoted in the article and they are working with their um, municipal elected leaders and, and um, city staff on um, ways, other alternative methods 
of working with and engaging folks that might be panhandling um, to get into housing, to engage with them, to figure out what the issues are, rather than enacting a very uh, stringent ordinance. And Eric, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. No, it's just that um, those kinds of things can sneak through. And unless we um, have an awareness and try to speak to the issue, and um, I think it's important that we frame it as um, a, a bigger community issue and that uh, a Band-Aid um, does not solve the problem, uh, creates another problem. So uh, if there is an uh, identification of an issue, um, that there should also be a commitment to be a party to working for solutions with other uh, folks who are working in this field in the community. I think that's the best way to frame it. Definitely. Um, and also, I, I know um, we've seen some things around um, encampments. That was just an article that I saw from California. Actually, my girlfriend forwarded it to me. I think it was on Yahoo or something, Yahoo News, about sweet encampment suites, sweeps that were happening in California and how uh, detrimental and devastating they are to people who lose their belongings, they lose their IDs, they lose, you know, anything that they really had, unfortunately, and how um, it, there's a cost both on the human side, but also the city is paying for law enforcement and, you know, whatever uh, city departments to participate in these sweeps and disposing of people's um, belongings. And that there are alternative ways to engage with folks in encampments and how sweeps are not really proven to be any um, helpful at all. And, and don't really, um, get people into housing it just forces people to disperse and then they end up uh you know not many people go to shelter there's not oftentimes not shelter availability and it, it doesn't hasten their uh access to housing so it's really uh, a challenge as well as you know we see a lot of these criminalization of homelessness in general as a threat to housing first and some efforts that cities do that really end up penalizing people more than um, anything else. Heather, you have your hand raised. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, I just wanted to um, just to chime in on that and to see because I've been SOAR certified since 2019. That may be another collaboration to to get into that because there are street outreach people, I'm sure, um, in that metro area compared to here, just to try to get those clients, you know, off the street. And um, ju ju it was just a thought that I had. So that might help. No, oh, wonderful. And thanks for mentioning <laughs> that. So SOAR is, you know, um, SSI Outreach Advocacy and uh, what's the R? I'm having a mind like now um, I should probably know too yeah. but well, yeah it's it's well, definitely a Monday yeah and it um so it's a way of uh connecting people help for you know fast track for SSI but it's or SSDI but it's also a way of getting a lot of times uh folks get uh signed up for Medicaid as well so then they have you know health insurance and it's very closely aligned with PATH. A lot of PATH workers are SOAR certified as well. So um, it's a super great way. And if you don't have it in your community, check within your COC um, because it's a super great uh, engagement philosophy for people that are um, unsheltered. Thanks for mentioning that, Heather. Any other comments or thoughts? Any updates? All right, so know that we have this time um, every month. And so you can even email me something ahead of time if you have something that um, is coming up in your community. So this, I, I really wanted to, um, Amy's really just kind of elevated our advocacy and our communications abilities and, um, so this is another way for you to make your voice heard and 
use this um, hashtag, the power of one for advocacy efforts that you're doing in concert with Micah. And we will be using it for our advocacy as well. So um, if you would love to either come off mute or drop it into the chat, one thing that you're doing as a result of the information that you gleaned from this meeting, we would love to hear it. Oh, yes. And thank you, Eric. We're in the planning stages for Breakfast of Champions, but it looks like, yeah, it'll be this June in. Um, and we have a later slide about that so folks can nominate an advocacy champion as well. Great. Yes, in person. We know you've been clamoring to, to be in person, a lot we've been hearing from a lot of folks. So, well, we hope you um, consider, you know, some sort of advocating as a result of this meeting or attending the, one of the webinars or looking at the Housing First webpage, looking at our webpage, um, agreeing to serve with me on uh, the coalition to work on. Um, source of income protections, or even participating in our advocacy video. Those are wonderful ways of taking that next step and doing something after this meeting. Thanks, Amy. Next slide. And Lisa, I can take this one if you don't mind. Um, I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware and it's the link will be embedded right in your pdf down in the lower left hand corner but a lot of the documents and things that lisa mentioned we do have on our blog um, sometimes it's just a reposting of the document to make sure you're aware sometimes it's an editorial on our part about what does micah think about these efforts and so um, when I send the follow-up email, there will be a link to the blog that you could go in and look. There's an opportunity to comment on it if you have some input on the different topics. So they're also on our social media, which I have a slide later about to make sure you're following us so you can see when these blogs are posted. So I just want to make sure we had a plug in here for that, that beyond the meeting, um, there are just, if you're more of a reader, um, there's blogs that capture a lot of this activity as well. Definitely. Thank you. And yeah, it's a way of checking in with us. The the first bullet point, amp Micah Amplifies Housing Policy and Budget Parties, that was the letter that we sent to the governor collaboratively. Okay, next slide. So again, Right after this, if you're interested in having back-to-back -back meetings or a webinar where you can eat your lunch, um, we have our MICA training for um, January is on grounding strategies. So we've heard from a lot of folks about um, continuing trauma and stressfulness just with the you know environment that we're living in with the pandemic and just how challenging some of the work has been, both virtual and in person. Um, so this webinar sounds really wonderful, and it's a way of combating stress and ways to find calm, given the really challenging work that um, you all are doing. We appreciate it. it's right after this meeting for this month. So you this year, this month is just a little off, as Lisa said, because of the holiday. Um, but these are available on our YouTube channel. So if you don't get a chance to see it today or you want to share it at a staff meeting or something, um, they are all available, including this one in a couple of days on our YouTube channel. Thank you. So coming next, attractions, we are going back to our regular rotation for our Legislative Action Committee meeting. So it will be February sixth the first monday of the month at noon and you will get a follow-up email today which summarizes all the things we talked about and some of the links if you weren't able to grab the pdf or the um, slides in the chat we will be sharing that out with you today next slide so here's a shameless plug from micah not so shameless. What we do 
is, you know, work in concert with our members and our advocates and our partners. And so why is it important to help, uh, you know, we're a membership organization and we really appreciate those of you that are able to join as members. You can join as an organizational member or an individual member. And so if you join, you support our work. There are certain benefits that are available to members only, event discounts, um, and it helps us um, in our advocacy work because then we can say to legislators, we have X members that you know represent all corners of the state and it helps us really in just pushing forward all of our work. Um, as well as you know the frontline agencies that are working in homeless response, the HMIS agencies, and all of you in the out in the continuums of care and the you know just all the work that you're doing in homeless response and housing. And lastly, you can follow us on the different platforms. Amy's been very active in moving us forward on social media. So here's um, our hashtags. And I just want to acknowledge it's really hard with email and webinars to always make time to stay in the loop of what's happening. But if at the very least you follow us on any one of these three platforms, we do try to continuously link different legislation or activities that Lisa's uh, working on or that Micah is working on. So you can kind of follow it as part of your feed. Um, that would be delivered to you if you can't make it to a webinar or visit the blog. We're um, trying to get that information out to you as readily as possible through our platforms as well. We also share out things that are happening across the state. If there are other partners, advocacy, you know, uh, alerts to share, we do that as well. So it's not just MICA information, but really information that we think will help inform the field. Um, and move forward on housing and ending homelessness. Next slide, please. I think we're done. That's it. Okay. That's it. A few minutes back in your day. Thanks everyone for hanging with us. We'll get this dual link thing scheduled. We're gonna um, we'll go back to our regular rotation, so it will be um, an ongoing link and really. Just want to thank you for your participation today. And we'll look forward to being with you again. And if some of you joined a little late, you may not have seen the PDF that was dropped in the chat. So Cassie's going to put it in there at the end. Um, if nothing else, if you just want to download that, it'll save the majority of the links and chat, um, references that we spoke about. You're welcome to share it. And then I will send a follow-up email to all the folks that registered that kind of summarize a lot of that. And thank you again for your patience um, at the start of the meeting too. Thank you.